Hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I'd like to share five more tips for organizations new to federal grants. And like my previous list, these are in no particular order, and this is by no means definitive. So take this five, and my first five, mash them up with a few other consultants, and you'll be all right. Let's get into it. First, avoid too much industry lingo. You know, all of us in our various professions tend to pick up phrases, language, terms, and jargon that are very specific to our fields. To outsiders, it just sounds like a foreign language. You know, as you're writing your proposal, try to avoid or at least minimize the use of industry phrases that might confuse or frustrate readers. And be sure to explain all acronyms. This is kind of a pet peeve of mine. I've been a reviewer before, and it's very frustrating when you keep seeing an acronym over and over again, but you can't find its initial use and an explanation of what the heck the applicant is talking about. So please help the reviewers out. Make, make their life just a little bit easier. Second, explain everything in sufficient detail so that even a layperson can understand your proposal. And nine times out of 10, the federal reviewers will be reasonably well-versed, if not experts, in your industry, uh, you know, healthcare, education, the environment, you know, whatever. But don't, don't assume that. Assume the people reviewing your proposal are that one in 10 that aren't completely familiar with your industry. Uh, you know, when I've gone back and read reviewers' comments to some of my unsuccessful proposals, it was clear in a couple instances they didn't understand the case my clients and I were trying to make. You know, we just we didn't provide enough background for the readers. We made assumptions about what they knew, and quite frankly, it didn't work. Uh, in another situation, based on a reviewer's comments, it was obvious the person didn't even work in education, but was still reviewing education reform proposals. And they scored us down because they didn't understand what we were proposing. Now, that might not be fair, but that's the way it is. So you need to walk that fine line, <clears throat> excuse me, between providing enough information so everyone can understand while still providing enough, you know, technical substance. And, you know, I don't want to get everyone overthinking this. It might be as simple as, you know, adding an extra two or three sentences here and there for foundation or just, you know, maybe adding a footnote to support some claims you're making. You know, don't don't overthink this. Third, details matter. I've mentioned this before in other outlets, but it's worth repeating. Follow every guideline and requirement in an RFP. Page limits, margins, font type, font size, line spacing, including line spacing of tables, headers, and footers, what information should and should not be included in the appendices, uh, what can and cannot be included in the budget, and so on. Pay attention to everything because everything matters. Fourth, make sure you have agreement between all of your proposal's elements. The proposal narrative, the budget, the budget narrative, and the appendices paint the complete picture of your application. All four sections need to be aligned and uh, in sync with each other. You know, for example, mentioning something in the proposal narrative that obviously requires uh, a budget item, but then failing to mention it in the budget is a red flag for reviewers. You know, this happens a lot with what I call, you know, add-on or uh, second and third tier activities that just, you know, they get lost in the shuffle 
as you're working on your primary objective. Um, what's a good example? So let's say you're as you're writing the proposal, one person on your team suggests adding an annual workshop or maybe a, a semi-annual community meeting as a way to strengthen the program. Well, that's cool, but what sometimes happens is the new idea makes its way into the narrative, but it's accidentally left out of the budget, which means you'll be on the hook to pay for it. You know, and well, maybe this isn't the best example. You know, an annual workshop is probably large enough that it wouldn't get overlooked, but I, I think you know where I'm, you know, where I'm going with this. Anytime you put in a proposal, we will do fill in the blank, no matter how big or small, you need to have a corresponding budget line item. <clears throat> and don't overlook the appendices. If the funding agency wants you to provide supplemental information, or if you say you're going to provide additional materials, don't forget to include them. But as a reminder, only include allowable materials in the appendices. You know, that's not a section you can use as a catch-all for, for every every document you want to throw at reviewers. Only include the stuff they request and allow. Fifth, have a third party read your proposal before you submit it. Try to pick someone with minimal knowledge of your organization and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, if they can understand the problem you're trying to solve and how your proposed solution will address that problem, there's a good chance the federal reviewers will understand your message too. You know, and this ties back to the point I made earlier, uh, don't assume anything from your readers. Connect all the dots for them. The problem, the solution, your, ex you know, your experience and qualifications, and how your budget is reasonable. Hmm. And always a bonus tip, which just call me Captain Obvious, don't miss deadlines, period, end of story. Short of a natural disaster or the grants.gov servers crashing, there's no excuse you can use to get out of missing a deadline. So just don't. If you can, plan to submit your proposals a day or two you know, ahead of time so you're never in that last minute pressure cooker. Because I've been there, I don't like it, my clients don't like it, nobody likes it. So like I said, just don't. Well, that's all I have. That was five plus one. Um, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or you want to follow up on any of these these five tips or the previous five, just go ahead and email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you found this useful, like it or give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment. I always appreciate feedback. Oh, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future presentations. Cool? All right. Thanks. See you next time.